You're really charging them to preach the gospel. That's the job of the bishop. Reflecting on 50 years and a devotion to God. He would pray every day, would open it up, fix the altars, and pray. To the faithful. He's a good spokesman and a straight shooter. And to the church. Pretty much anything good that's happened in the immigration field, Bishop's been involved in. From Nicholas DiMarzio's childhood to his calling and the major milestones along the way. He's a great example of a street priest, and that's one of the highest compliments you can give. Right now, a current news special, Bishop DiMarzio, a legacy of service. Hello, I'm Christine Persichetti. Bishop DiMarzio's ministry spans half a century, first as a priest and auxiliary bishop in the Archdiocese of Newark, then as Bishop of Camden, and last but not least, Brooklyn, where he has spent the last 18 years shepherding the faithful. Now, Bishop DiMarzio will soon retire, but not before he leaves behind a legacy as diverse as the three dioceses he served. Joyous applause in 2003 as Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio is installed as the Diocese of Immigrants' newest leader. You have a great, good priest and bishop. Chosen to minister to the spiritual needs of close to 2 million Catholics in Brooklyn and Queens, many considered the former Bishop of Camden to be a perfect choice, not only because he's a native son of the tri-state area, but also because of his experience with migrant issues. <laughs> In fact, his very first act as Bishop of Brooklyn was to speak at the Immigrant Workers Freedom Rally at Flushing Meadows Park. Ed Wilkinson, the tablet's editor emeritus, remembers his impact. Here he is, the bishop holding a copy of the tablet. <laughs> it was about immigration reform, and he wanted to go on the record right away that uh, he was, you know, was in favor of uh, newcomers coming to our, to our country, many of them are Catholics. <laughs> That's because Brooklyn is home to nearly 950,000 foreign-born residents, representing almost 200 countries. A rich landscape where mass is celebrated in more than 30 languages. The bishop saying he took to his new diocese like a duck to water. I'm paddling pretty fast. Ever since, Brooklyn's ever-changing demographics continue to inspire the church to adapt, especially when it comes to the priesthood and vocations. It's more than just, you know, a poster or asking guys to consider coming to the seminary. After years of decline, the number of men entering the seminary is on the rise, due in part to the bishop's decision to open a house of discernment where men can consider becoming priests before they make a commitment. Something Bishop of Patterson Kevin Sweeney experienced firsthand as Brooklyn's one-time vocations director. I think we've seen under Bishop DiMarzio's leadership that when the um, support is given and the opportunities are there, that uh, young people are, opening, are open to uh, at least considering the possibility of hearing and responding to the Lord's call. President. Father Lenardi is one of those young people who considered and answered the call. It's fundamental for me, for my vocation. He gave me a great testimony of a great bishop, of a father that is taking care of a a shepherd that is taking care of his sheep. That level of service is central to the bishop's life's work, but one challenge in particular has taken its toll, the difficult issue of clerical sexual abuse within the church. Jasmine Salazar, the vice chancellor and victim assistance coordinator, explains how hard Bishop DiMarzio has worked. One of the first things that the bishop did when he came here was that he established the toll-free reporting line um, so that anyone who had an allegation against a member of the clergy, anyone representing the church, they would call the reporting line. And the reporting line was not filtered in any way. He made sure that there was a volunteer um, who was answering the reporting line that knew to take the facts of the report and immediately send the report to the corresponding district attorney's office. As the healing continues and the diocese evolves, the impact of Bishop DiMarzio's lifelong work will forever be felt, especially among the faithful that have made his time as Bishop of Brooklyn and Queens so worthwhile. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, 
now as Bishop DiMarzio prepares to pass the baton to his successor, his hopes for the Diocese of Immigrants continues to be one of a humble servant of God. Maybe to say that he was the people's bishop is a wonderful epithet if I had a right one. Um, so that would make me satisfied. But what about the time before Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio decided to dedicate his life to God? What was he like as a boy, a teenager? Let's look back on the moments that helped shape his path to the priesthood, a journey that began early just across the river in a close-knit family with strong ties to the church. Brooklyn's Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio grew up in Newark, New Jersey, right across the street from the Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart, where his mother remembers that he was drawn to the church even as a young boy. When he was five years old, he loved to play with little statues of saints. So his grandmother emptied out a kitchen cupboard and she made, there was a shelf and it was his altar and he would put the little statues there and he would pray every day, he would open it up, fix the altars, and pray. The oldest of three children, young Nicholas grew up in a modest home with his maternal grandparents, while his paternal grandparents lived close by, all of them immigrants from southern Italy who never forgot their deep Italian roots. One grandfather in particular made sure his grandson didn't forget either. He came home from work at night, he put me on his knee, and uh, he taught me Italian, word at a time. For every word I said properly, I got one penny, put it in the jar, put it on the windowsill. The next night I had a test. Did I remember the word? If not, took the penny back. So it was a, a mercenary thing. He wanted to make sure that at least the first grandson spoke Italian. Just one of the many childhood memories that would inform the rest of his life, including one defining moment that helped steer him toward the priesthood, a pilgrimage to Lourdes when he was a Boy Scout. It was a life-changing experience in the baths especially. I've been to Lourdes about four times since. I never will go back in the baths because I, that first experience was enough. Left to right, Shake. over the left. Easy. The pilgrimage to Lourdes would inspire a lifelong commitment to the Boy Scouts that continues to this day. Years later, when he entered the seminary, Father Mike Russo, an old neighborhood friend and fellow seminarian who still calls the Bishop Nick, says his leadership skills were evident early on. I've known uh, Nick DiMarzio since high school. He was always the leader of his class. He was elected to just about everything because he's a good spokesman and a straight shooter. And uh, I think people respected him then as they respect him now. Nick DiMarzio became Father Nicholas DiMarzio in May of 1970, his ordination taking place at his beloved childhood parish. It was a great event. I, I do remember it uh, in Sacred Heart Cathedral. I mean, most of my sacraments were in Sacred Heart Cathedral from confirmation on. I was ordained a deacon there and then eventually a priest and even a bishop eventually. So uh, it, it's a special place for me. After his ordination, he was assigned to St. Nicholas Church in Jersey City, an ethnic parish that solidified his commitment to migrant rights. Several years later, he was sent to Washington to serve as the executive director of Migration and Refugee Services for the U.S. Catholic Conference. A learning experience that would eventually take him around the world and to the doorstep of some of the world's most controversial leaders. He had face-to-face -face conversations with uh, Fidel Castro uh, about the, the issue of the refugees from Cuba. Monsignor Alfred Lepinto has known Bishop DiMarzio since his days in Washington and remembers that extraordinary encounter. I got a knock on the door. Uh, the, the, could you please get dressed? And uh, we, we have to take you to see El Jefe. El Jefe, nobody, you didn't pronounce his name. He never said, if, if Fidel, you said El Jefe. So, that was one night, about three nights later, another knock on the door, went back again for another three hour harangue. Basically he kept talking and talking. It was one, just me and him in a room. And basically I just kept really adding, we wanted to help these people, we want to take them. It's not the government, it's the church. So it was an interesting time, you know, to say, and, and uh, we had to keep it low key. So I never advertised that I had been the one to get through there and whatnot. So we kept it quiet. But when I was ordained a bishop, 
three of the prisoners who had got, I had had helped get out came to my ordination and brought me a plaque with a little humor in it, it says, to the man who helped us out. <laughs> so that uh, was a nice thing that, that they remembered. After his time in Washington, then Monsignor DiMarzio came back to his hometown of Newark as the director of Catholic Charities. In 1996, he was elevated to auxiliary bishop and three years later to an even higher calling as the sixth bishop of Camden. Camden was, you know, a joyful place, about 400,000 Catholics, but uh, and about, I guess, 120 parishes. So it was spread out. It was very diverse. You got a good experience there. Bishop DiMarzio spent almost five years as the Bishop of Camden before answering the call once again, this time to lead the faithful in one of the most diverse places on earth. You get a call and say, uh, the, the Holy Father wants you to go to Brooklyn, uh, New York as bishop. I said, thank you. That's, that's it. You say, aye, aye, sir. You don't argue the case. And you go. And he did go to a uniquely urban landscape advocating for the rights of the marginalized. Give us a kind heart for the needy and for the strangers. The newcomer to a new land in no better place to call home than in the Diocese of Immigrants. When we come back, a friend, a brother, and a real mentor. That's how Cardinal Timothy Dolan describes Bishop DiMarzio in an exclusive interview. But first, Brooklyn's Vicar General, Bishop Raymond Cepetto, reflects on Bishop DiMarzio's enduring legacy. Bishop DiMarzio was the right person at the right time. The biggest contribution that he has made to the diocese is that he was not afraid to tackle the problems that existed. He doesn't shrink away from tough problems. He tries his very best to solve those problems and he uh, usually comes up with the right answer. You look back and you hope you did a good job. I mean I could look back in, in Brooklyn here and I know I had unfortunately a very big administrative burden. It's a, certainly better now than when I came administratively. Hopefully spiritually it is too. We try to do a lot of spiritual programs. So um, I think I can say, um, I think I did a good job. The Diocese of Brooklyn is unique in that it's in the same city as another diocese, the Archdiocese of New York. Bishop DiMarzio has worked closely with Cardinal Timothy Dolan. I sat down with the Cardinal to learn more about their friendship, which started way before either of them called New York home. I got to know him better, much better, when I came here as Archbishop of New York in April of 2009, almost uh, 13 years ago. And then we became so my respect and admiration for him developed into a fraternity and a, a genuine affection and a real intense collaboration. He used to make the uh, he he used to make the comment that I think was indicative of his legendary uh, savviness. He said, "You know, you and I are sort of good combination." He said, "You you come across as this nice guy, this." Uh, come on, let's get everybody together, let's all get along. And he said, I can come, I can come across more. It was, he would say it's sort of good cop, bad cop. But look, he's a good cop too. But he, he, he was aware uh, of his persona as kind of a, a no-nonsense, let's get things done and let's cut to the chase and say what's really going on here. And that was a good combination. So New York is one of the most diverse places yeah. on earth, different ethnicities, different languages, cultures, all of that. It's a complicated city, different dioceses. So how do you make it work when there's so many people coming from different backgrounds? You make it work by showing up, all right? And Bishop DiMarzio would show up. He wouldn't miss an A&P ribbon cutting, you know? When he was invited, he'd be there. He's a great example of a street priest, and that's one of the highest compliments you can give another priest. Uh, Jesus was a street priest. He walked the streets. He went out to the people. He didn't sit there and wait for them to come to him. He went out. And Bishop DiMarzio would be that, literally a street priest. What do you think are some of Bishop DiMarzio's signature achievements? With all the challenges and crises that we've had, we need not underestimate the fact that Brooklyn is still going strong, okay? And he knows that a lot of what you might call the settled Catholic people are moving out. That's America, that's New York, you move on. 
But so there's been, because of that, he's had to merge some schools, he's had to merge from some parishes, but he's done it in a very fair, consultative way, and the, the diocese of Brooklyn continues to flourish thanks to, his, thanks to his leadership. He's been extraordinarily effective in strengthening and expanding Catholic charities, which is his forte. And he's done that very, very well. He's been very effective on the communications front, hasn't he? Look, Net TV, bravo. Give me something about your relationship, a memory, any particular memory, something fun about your relationship. He's got a laugh that can uh, shake the Empire State Building. And I sort of set as my goal always to get him to laugh, and he loves it. Now, I'm, I'm teasing him now a lot. We go back and forth on the Irish-Italian thing. And I, I've said to him, uh, I'm so happy in your successor because fi uh, we got another Irishman in Brooklyn. Well, he just roars, you know. He's he, a good friend, you know. My gosh, just to relax and, and have one of his uh, legendary bowls of pasta. So I really became uh, close to him, and I consider him a friend and a brother and a real mentor. Cardinal Dolan says Bishop DiMarzio was well known even before he was a bishop. The Cardinal told me when he worked at the Vatican Embassy in Washington, D.C., and a question would come up about how best to care for immigrants or refugees, everyone would say, call DiMarzio. Still to come on this special edition of Currents News, we focus on Bishop DiMarzio's life, work, and passion, his ministry to immigrants. But first, John Allen, the editor of Crux, tells us how Bishop DiMarzio's service has changed the country. Oh, I think the overarching legacy of Bishop Nicholas de Marzio is putting immigration squarely on the job description of a Catholic bishop in the United States. To see him so passionate, so committed, so articulate about why the defense of the underclass, the defense of the marginalized, and in the defense of the new arrival is a core element of what it means to defend the gospel in our time. I was in Washington for six years. It was uh, exciting, uh, really, to get to Washington, to learn the situation, giving um, testimony before Congress and sometimes the Senate. We worked together and we got something done. And uh, that's what's lacking today in Washington. There's nobody talks to one another, and that's a big problem. Bishop DiMarzio's focus on immigrants helped to define his early years in Washington and his time as the Bishop of Brooklyn. But the thorny issues of reform are just as challenging today as they were the day he set foot in Brooklyn, which is known as the Diocese of Immigrants. <laughs> Desperate migrants, angry protests, heated rhetoric. Go home! As the debate over immigration continues. But separating fact from fiction is a daunting task. Deep in Something Bishop DiMarzio knows all too well. I've been, I've been working with immigrants my whole priesthood for 50 years now, and a lot of the myths that we have that people believe are not really true, and that's where we have a, a bad policy because it's, it's based on uh, false information. Those policies have both sides of the aisle debating immigration reform as surges at the southern border continue to vex the new administration. What we're doing now is attempting to rebuild. Bishop DiMarzio began his life in the church working with immigrants in an ethnic parish that his mother remembers spoke to his own Italian roots. In his first parish that he was sent to, there were quite a few immigrants coming from Italy and he said mass for them in Italian and he started helping them with their citizenship papers, teaching them the English language and helping them with various things that they needed to be helped. After earning advanced degrees in social work and philosophy, he used his expertise to work with lawmakers on migrant reform. We are opposed to illegal immigration. We've, on the record, clearly many times in that area. 
testifying before Congress, consulting on migrant reform, even brokering the release of political prisoners from Cuban jails in face-to-face -face conversations with Fidel Castro. By 1996, then Monsignor DiMarzio was back in New Jersey, where he was elevated to Auxiliary Bishop and then to Bishop of Camden all the while taking on more responsibilities in defense of migrants, participating on pontifical councils, chairing several organizations, and helping to establish the Catholic Legal Immigration Network, or CLINIC. Pretty much anything good that's happened in the immigration field, Bishop's been involved in. Donald Kerwin has been tackling immigration issues with the bishop for decades. So when he was named the new Bishop of Brooklyn, he thought it was a perfect fit and for more than just his professional experience. He's so committed to these issues. He grew up in a house with his um, immigrant grandparents from Italy who didn't speak English. He came up from an Italian community, and he's always been personally very, very committed to these issues. So to know where your grandparents come from, to be able to interact with them, uh, gave me the feeling of what immigration was like for them and how the same problems that they faced are faced by new immigrants today. And today, that tradition continues with a culturally diverse patchwork of 26 ethnic ministries, half of whom are immigrants. Brooklyn's strong immigrant ministry is now spearheaded by Catholic Charities of Brooklyn and Queens, where Monsignor Alfred Lepinto deals with the challenges facing the diocese's ever-changing demographics. Brooklyn and Queens, uh, back then and even more so through his time here, has been a community, communities const in constant change. There has been kind of an experimental situation in this little laboratory they call Brooklyn and Queens. A big experiment for sure, where the effects of Bishop DiMarzio's lifelong work can be felt by more than three million immigrants in that very special place, forever known as the Diocese of Immigrants. The bishop plans to keep on working with immigrants even after his retirement. On a final note, on behalf of all of us at Currents News, we'd like to thank Bishop DiMarzio for supporting Catholic journalism and allowing us to bring you the news from the Catholic perspective. I'm Christine Persichetti. Hope to see you again next time.